Um, most of the announcements that I have are in the uh, bulletin. Of course, we have our call congregational meeting um, after the service today. I guess pending uh, having a quorum. That's for uh, voting to extend the call to Pastor David Steyer. So uh, please, everyone, hopefully we'll stay for that. Um, there's a bridal shower this afternoon for uh, Caroline and Dusty um, at 3 o'clock here at BLC. Um, it's also a baby shower. The congregation is invited to for John, Emma and John Ratchford on June 9th um, here at the fellowship, uh, in the fellowship hall. And then we also have a luncheon to, luncheon to honor Pastor Corky. It'll be a covered dish meal. Uh, that'll be June 2nd, so please put that on your uh, um, calendars. It'll be after the service on June 2nd. And it says members are asked to bring a side dish or dessert, meat, and beverages. There's some information there about Bible school. Um, it's been in there for several weeks now. It's coming up in a week or two. And then uh, BYG News also. Anybody want to speak on any other announcements? Refreshments for the social hall after the church for graduates. Refreshments for graduates. Yes, ma'am. There are sign-up sheets out in the hallway. Um, summer Sunday school, we would like to have some substitutes to sign up for a week or two so that the regular teachers can have a little break over the summer. But we still want to have Sunday school. Please remember to come and bring your kids. And you can come here for any you send it to yourself too, but we're just looking for some substitutes for a few weeks. Thank you. You want to say something? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'm going to know if we have a quorum. We do have a quorum, okay, so we will have the meeting right after church. Um, there is a handout that should have been, it was up there by the bulletins, just make sure that uh, it's like a biography and what, what we're voting on today, so if you didn't get a copy of that, please get a copy of that. And also on the, um, June 2nd meal, the meat that we have planned, we're going to try to cook some uh, Boston butts and maybe some ribs so that with the cover, to go with the covered dish instead of fried chicken this time. So it's just an idea that we had as, as, as a group up here. So um, that's all I have. Men of the Bible. All right. Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, is this shirt acceptable? You didn't like last week's. Is this one acceptable? <laughs> Um, hello, Arliss Joe. I uh, hope to see you next week when I'm back in Kansas. Mom and Dad. And believe it or not, I've been here almost a year, and my landlord, H.B. Ron, has not come to see me here at church. Cynthia came. But he said this morning he was going to try and figure out how to get me online. So, H.B., if you're watching, hey, about time. I'm going to pay for that, aren't I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we begin our time together with uh, a time for reflection with the musical prelude by Karen.
So I got a text already from my daughter about my shirt. She says, I look like the tomato in VeggieTales. <laughs> Let's stand. <laughs> The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us share the peace of the Lord with each other. God's peace. God's peace. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn, number 523, Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son, Oh, God. 
Let us pray. God of life, on this day you poured forth upon your church your spirit, through whom we are one body, the body of Christ. Unite us at your table, that we may be poured forth into the world, bearing witness to your grace and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the proclamation of the word. reading is from Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 through 14 it can be found on page 860 in your pew Bible the hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley it was full of bones and he led me around among them and behold there were very many on the surface of the valley and behold they were very dry and he said to me Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. The first reading, um, the second reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Found on page 1081. When the day of Pentecost arrived and they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But the other said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to 
to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the readings. <laughs> mystery books a good mystery book I'm going to age myself a little bit so I remember reading these books called the Hardy Boys anybody else ever read the Hardy Boys Nancy Drew yeah. but it's all of the more old yeah, not old we're just um, <laughs> age <laughs> anyway so I came across a book in my classroom and it is a mystery book about an egg <laughs> Anybody know a story about an egg that fell off of a wall? Or did, it, uh -huh. did, did he really fall? Or was he pushed? <laughs> Do we know? There's a story called What Really Happened to Humpty Dumpty from the Files of a Hard Boiled Detective. So I don't know if you know, but Humpty had a brother named Joe. And Joe is an investigator. And he's going to find out. Like, did Little Miss Muffet push him off the wall? Did he really just fall? Like, what's the real story behind Humpty Dumpty falling? Okay. Well, today, Pastor's going to read some scripture. And from that scripture, he doesn't say the word the Holy Trinity, but we kind of learn about the Trinity. Does anyone know when we're talking in church and we talk about the Trinity, what it is we're talking about? The Holy Trinity. I'm going to put up a number and see if this helps. Three. And if we talk about God, which I know y'all have been talking about this in case you can. God, God the... God the Son and the Holy Spirit. Right. Y'all got them all. Just the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. And y'all been learning about that a lot in Casey Jam and in Sunday school, correct? So sometimes that's a mystery to people. You wonder, how can one thing really be three different things all together, right? So we're going to go back to our egg. So we all agree this is an egg, correct? Am I right? All right, so I boiled this yesterday. We'll see if this happens right. What am I doing now? What part of the egg? The what? The shell. It's not doing very nice. All right, so we agree that an egg has a shell, right? So is that one part of the egg? All right. I'm going to get to a good spot here in just a minute. It's going to feel so There we go. So here we have our egg, and it's got the shell. Anybody like to help peel eggs? Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all do like to peel them. Do we always? Sometimes it goes off super easy, so it doesn't. So what's going to happen when I cut this egg? It's going to. It is yummy, isn't it? We like eggs. You see the yolk in the middle, and then you see the white part, right? So an egg, we, this is still an egg, right? But how many parts does this egg have? Uh, two. Three. It's got the shell, it's got the white, and it's got the yolk. Now, we don't eat the shell, do we? No, not unless it was a bad pill and it got in the salad or something. Right? So we've got our egg there, and it's really three pieces of an egg, correct? But it's really just one one egg, three parts to it. Okay, so we, we talk and we use the, the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We talk about it a lot. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? So we're really talking about God in three persons. So um, I want us to remember now when we have eggs, if they're an egg salad, a potato salad, a boiled egg, that that can remind us of the Holy Trinity, right? And when we hear people talk about the Trinity, does this make it a little bit easier? Understand that one thing can be made of three different parts, like the egg. 
now we're going to close in prayer. All right, so let's fold our hands and repeat after me. God, we thank you for being all powerful and all knowing and for loving us. We thank you for the things in our lives that we don't always understand. And for giving us faith to believe them anyway. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's go get some things. Gospel according to St. John, beginning with the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples on what we would know as Monday, Thursday. Jesus says, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. A few decades ago, pretty close to 30 years ago, I was in between calls. I had a call, but because of the funding process, uh, I wasn't able to start at this particular church until the 1st of July. So I needed some jobs to get me through that time period, and one of the places that I worked was the intermodal yard in Atlanta, Georgia. If you don't know what an intermodal yard is, it's a rail yard but it's where they bring the big trucks in with their long trailers and either go on the train to get shipped out or they bring them into the yard and we take them off the train and then they go out in trucks. There's, I know there's one of those around here somewhere. One of the mementos, if you will, that I picked up from that time is what I have in my hand. Some of you will know what this is and some of you probably are wondering, what the heck is it? These are called glad hands. There's two of them here. I have them put together, and you'll never get them apart unless you're a lot stronger than me or maybe stronger than Ken, um, because I got them bolted down. But we found these all over the yard. Now there'd be, one of these would be attached to the truck, and the other would be attached to the trailer. 
So there are two separate pieces here. So you have one piece and the other piece. You have two of them, and they come together at an angle, and then you twist them, and they lock, and that's what you see here. They become glad because they're, they're together. Then when you sit down in the driver's seat of the truck, you hit this big red button, and you hear this whoosh. And that means you now have air going through your, your braking system and you can actually put the truck in gear and pull away and the trailer will follow you. If you don't either hook these up or you don't push that big red button to allow air into the braking system, you're not going to move that trailer because the brakes are still locked. It's impossible for that to move forward. Over the years, this has come to symbolize to me our life in the spirit. You see, the braking system that is used on these big trucks is called a pneumatic brake system. Pneumatic is a Greek word, pneumos. It gets translated in the New Testament in three different ways. Wind, breath, Amy Grant uses that image in her song, her Christmas song, Breath of Heaven, means that. And spirit, one word, pneumas, gets translated into those, one of those three, depending on the context of the sentence. So this is a symbol of pneumatic power, or the breath of the spirit. So if we're not hooked up with the Spirit, God's wind, God's breath, God's Spirit does not blow through our system and we're not going to go anywhere. We're going to be stuck in whatever it is that holds us in place. But if we're hooked up to the Spirit and God's breath, God's wind, God's Spirit is moving through us, we can move forward. We can live a transformed life. We can do the work that God has given us to do in our time here on earth. I like that Old Testament lesson from Ezekiel. The bodies were fully formed, but no life was in them until the breath of God blew into them and they became a mighty army. Today, you're going to have a conversation and a vote, and what you're really talking about is how are the winds of the Spirit going to move us forward in the future? What shape is that going to take? And so I say to you all, all y'all, <laughs> breathe deeply. Breathe deeply the Spirit of God and see where He takes you. Our hymn of response, O Holy Spirit, Root of Life, let's stand and sing.
confess our faith, saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Karen, I call you forward. Let's have our graduates come forward. Does the hair color help with the, <laughs> the study? <laughs> no? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back in the day, my first real job was as a civil engineer. I was about 14 when I went to work on a crew. That's so ancient history, we still use actual chains to measure. You're going to be using satellite and laser. So it's totally different than it was way back then. Let us stand for the prayers of the church. Lord God, we, we give you thanks for milestones, for tasks that have been accomplished, for steps along the way in the life that you call each of us to. And so we lift up Tyler and Will and Jake and Oliver, asking that you would bless their journeys, that you would use them in the areas of life where you need a witness to your great love. We thank you for this chance to celebrate with them and to recognize them. Lord, in your mercy. I lift up to you Bible Lutheran Church, Lord, as we process today and take a big step of deciding if this is the future that you have called us to as we prepare to vote for a new pastor. We ask that your wisdom be with us, that we would feel the presence of your spirit as we make this decision. Lord, in your mercy. I lift up to you those who continue to need your loving touch for Daniel with lymphoma, for Anne with her continuing heart issue and the fun of shingles, for Caitlin, Dickie's son, Zane, recovering from surgery, for John, diagnosed with a brain tumor, Caitlin with uh, brain surgery, for Mark, who is in hospice, and Mrs. Aspinwall, we pray for Dawn's friend, Alex, who had seizures and will undergo a test. For Mark, recovering from copperhead bite. For Mike, with ongoing issues, health issues. For Dawn Steele and for Leon, that you would continue to be with them through this journey and that you would speed healing if that is your will. And I give thanks for Barb and Mike and this couple that had two major health issues crop up at the same time that they're doing well. We pray for Terry recovering from knee surgery, for Tammy undergoing chemo, for Fran Sutherland um, with this, another brain surgery, for James for the loss of feeling and that you would give wisdom to what happened and how it could be repaired, for Ronnie with blood clot issues, for Derek complications after surgery. We give thanks for Ashley and Brian and baby Emerson Reese now at home and doing well. 
for Armanda, uh, stage one lung cancer and stage four colon cancer. For Mary Ellen, diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Dave Selinger, uh, as he continues his journey with cancer. For Gertrude, and broken ribs and the process of healing. For Hank, diagnosed with cancer. For Sarah, suffering with MS. For Carl, diagnosed with cancer. For Floyd, with medical mysteries. For Johnny, diagnosed with kidney cancer and struggling a bit. I continue to lift up my friend Ralph and his friend Fred and Ralph's wife Margaret. And we pray for Suzanne and her premature son John, uh, that you would be with them as this um, journey goes forward, that you would bring John through this safely. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I looked up to you, those of us who are grieving, and I have to count myself in that midst today at the loss of my friend Charles Bonney this week back in Texas, that you would give us comfort for the family of Mike and Gail and Nikki and Dave Pennington, that you would just wrap your arms around us let us feel your comfort as we try to make sense of all that has happened. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We continue to lift those who have long-term issues for Joanne, for Lisa, for Jason, for Mom and Dad, for Sharon, for Rick, for Paul, for Brenda, for Mary and Daniel, for Sarah, for Dorothy, for RMA, for Isabel, and for Virginia, who is doing really well with her recovery, but is having a little bit of issue with the chemo. We lift them all up to you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who are on the front line in military, fire, law enforcement, hospital, wherever they're the first ones on the scene, that you would keep them safe and that you would use them as your witnesses. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for our ministry partners, reaching people, touching lives that we'll never even know about. For Danny and Rebecca and their children, for John and Carol, for Jimmy, for Lisa, Kristen, Christy, Amber, and for Maritime Bethel Ministry, and that ministry that's dealing, um, working with those who are on that ship up in the, Boston, in the um, Baltimore Harbor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I ask, Lord, for travel mercies, that you keep me safe and alert and not doing something stupid as I'm on the road for another 26 or 2,700 miles in the next few weeks. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I have our anthem at this time.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord who rose beyond the bonds of death, and on this day, as he had promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exalts in boundless joy. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, O Lord Jesus, took the bread of suffering, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the supper was finished, he took the cup of salvation, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood. It's the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As Christ has taught us, we boldly pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of the Lord for the people of the Lord, we invite those who confess Christ as Lord to join with us in this meal and celebration. You may be seated. of Christ given for you. The body 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 of Christ given for you. May the Lord bless you and fill you with his hope and his spirit and his joy. The body of Christ given for you. May the spirit of God come upon you and fill you with his gifts, especially of strength of spirit in Christ's name. The body of Christ given for you. May the love of God reach your heart. May his joy always be with you. May the power of the spirit always be your guide. The body of Christ given for you. May the love and joy of Jesus fill your heart always. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ. 
Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. given for you the body of Christ 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 given for you given for you the body of Christ 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 given for you given for you the body of Christ given for you the body of Christ given for you the body of Christ given for you don't move out of his arms may the Lord keep you and grow you strong in Jesus amen the body of Christ given for you 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 given for you. May the Lord come upon you with the Spirit and give you all of the strength and hope in Jesus' name. The body of Christ given for you. 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 May the Lord fill you always with his hope and his joy. May the Spirit give you all of his love in Christ's name. The body of Christ given for you. given for you the body of Christ 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 given for you the body of
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Is anybody out there? Please stand. <clears throat> now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. pray. Almighty God, you gave your son both as a sacrifice for sin and as a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 486, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. give the words of dismissal and then ask you to be seated as we'll move right into the congregational meeting. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You'll be seated.